Today I'm going to show you five different ways I set up my camera bag. Now a few of you have asked me for a what's in my camera bag video and even though these are quite interesting there are tons of these on YouTube. So instead of doing this I'm going to show you how I set my bag up depending on what I'm using it for. Now camera bags are great as you can change the setup with all of these removable dividers and don't think you have to set it up one way and leave it there. There are many different ways to set it up. Some are good for certain photography jobs and others are great for say hiking or doing day walks. You can change it to your heart's content and you can change it as many times as you want. I'm just gonna give you a lot of different ideas but ultimately it's up to you how you set your bag up. And of course, if you're interested in this bag, which is the Low Pro Pro Tactic 450 AW2, I think it is. I've just got the new one. I had the 450 Mark I, but I got the 450 Mark II now. If you are interested in this bag, there's a link in the description below. When I'm out on a photography shoot and I don't know exactly what I'll be needing, or maybe I'm just going out to shoot something, but I don't know whether I'll need a wide angle lens or a telephoto lens, this is how I normally set it up. I tend to take everything, all of my lenses as well as backup cameras. Sometimes this works and pays off well, and other times I'll just end up using one or two bits of the kit. But it's always good to have a lot of kit with you as long as you're not walking a long distance or as long as you don't have to travel too far. Basically, this is the setup that I have if I'm gonna to drive to the location and I'm gonna shoot near the car. I have everything to hand. I don't have anything on top of each other so I can grab lenses when I need to. Now I've got two substitute cameras in here for now. Normally I'd have my a7 III that I'm filming with and I'd have the second camera here, but that's filming up above here. That's doing the bird's eye view. So. I've got my wife's camera and I've got my RX10 in there. I tend to have my cameras at the bottom. That puts most of the weight at the bottom and also so I can access these cameras through these side pockets. And then I'll have my lenses at the middle, battery pouches in the middle, and then any other lenses I need in these other pouches. Then if I'm gonna use a camera strap or anything like that, I'll put that up here as well as a good old camera blower. So I'll have that up there. And also in this middle section, I'll have some camera cloths as well. So it's basically just so you have everything in easy reach and a nice layout. So you've got your cameras either side, but everything is protected. So there's nothing knocking into each other or nothing banging into each other. And this is why these bags are so good. You can personalize them to your heart's content. If you use a gimbal a lot, this is a really cool way to set up your bag. I did a video on this a while back and it was one of my first videos. If you haven't watched it yet and you're a new subscriber, you're in for an absolute treat. So go and watch it at the end of the video and I'll have a link in the description as well. I kind of sound a little bit stoned in it or like I've just woken up. I definitely wasn't stoned, um, although it's funny to watch and it's funny to see how my delivery to camera has changed since then. So to set the bag up like this, I've put the dividers up the middle. Some of the bags do have a solid part in the middle, but this one, all of these dividers are removable and that's great. So I've got the long big one here into an L shape and I've got a shorter one here. So with the gimbal that I've got, which is the Crane 1, so it's the original one. It's got a really long piece on the bottom and this elbow sits quite low. So you've got to drop one side lower and have this side higher. And then the camera is there. So the great thing with these bags is that it's quite deep on this top end and it means you can fit your camera in there on the gimbal. And it means through this top panel, I can pull the camera out and I can be ready to go and ready to film with my camera on a gimbal within a few seconds. Then what I've done is put all of these dividers on the sides. Well, I've got the dividers on this side for the different lenses that I've got. Then I've got my drone in this side and I've got my filters up here. It does take up a lot of space and it means that you can't put as much in your bag, but having your camera on a gimbal ready to go inside your bag is quite unique. And I always use this when I'm out filming and it means that I can put that camera on the gimbal away in my bag and not worry about it. 
Now this is fantastic when it's raining and say if you want to grab a few different shots without your kit getting too wet. Or maybe you're walking through a bit of a dodgy neighborhood and you don't want all of your camera kit on show. It's all inside and it's all contained within your bag. Now I've seen some reviewers trying to sell certain bags that are perfect for gimbals or that are the ultimate gimbal bags. And then they just slide the gimbal into the tripod slot on the side of the bag. So the gimbal's not even in the bag. And also the camera isn't on the gimbal either. Now this is far from ideal. If it rains, where are you gonna put it? And if a mugger is looking for a potential target, a gimbal on the outside of your bag screams that you have money and that you have expensive kit in your bag. Now I know camera bags kind of stand out a little bit from normal bags, but if everything is in your bag, it's not on show and people can't see what you've got. Therefore, having a camera on a gimbal ready to go inside your bag is such a good way of having it set up when you're a filmmaker, a YouTuber or a hybrid shooter. Next is my portrait setup. What I found was at the weekends, I was shooting a lot of video, so I'd have the camera set up in the gimbal setup. And then the week when I was working, I was doing corporate headshots, portraits and things like that. And a lot of the times they were on location. So I had to take all of my kit to that one office or place where I was doing the portraits. So I kind of built it around the gimbal setup so I could switch between the two really quickly. I shoot with the AD200s and I've got two of these and these sit in this middle section nicely. So with that gimbal setup, the gimbal sat in this middle bit. I just added this extra bit and these two dividers as well as the divider over here. So I was able to keep this narrow bit in the middle for the flashes. So they're in the middle. Again, they're low because they're quite heavy. So the backpack sits nicely with that weight low down. And then I was able to put these extra compartments in for more lenses for the bare flash bulbs that come with the AD200 and obviously two cameras. I'd normally have taken a7 III and then the A7R2 or the A7R3, or I may have been hiring some other cameras like the A7R4, but I'd keep the two cameras again at the bottom with two lenses on, then I'd have two extra lenses, and then I'd have my flash brackets in here, so they'd go straight onto the uh, light stands, and then I'd have a roller bag where I'd have all of my light stands and all of my soft boxes in. But this means I have all of my camera gear in my backpack, and then I have all the flashes and all the soft boxes in a roller bag. So it's easily portable and the weight is spread evenly between the two. One other thing, the X1 trigger, what I'd normally do with that is just keep it in this top pocket here. One of the worst things with being a photographer is traveling with camera gear. It reminds me of when I used to be a professional kite surfer a long time ago, and we'd travel to lots of different locations with a whole load of kite surfing gear. It was an absolute nightmare, and there would always be that dread of not knowing whether you'll get your kit on the plane or not, or how much it was gonna to cost to get all of it to the location. And it's similar with photography, not quite the same, but similar. Instead of your checked baggage being a huge problem, your camera bag is usually over the limit. I did a video on this a while back, so if you haven't seen that one yet, click on the eye in the corner or the link in the description. In it, I go through all of the problems that might arise when you're flying with camera kit and how to get around those problems. I layer lenses on top of each other because this bag is quite deep. And if you lay them on the sides, or if you have smaller lenses, all I do is get lens cloths, put them over the top, and then drop the lens in and it stops them banging against each other, but it still keeps them safe and it means you can fit more kit in your bag. The next thing I do is put both of my cameras with the heaviest lenses on, on their camera straps. So what this means is if I'm having problems with checking in or they want to weigh my bag, I can take those two cameras out straight away and if they don't want me to put them back in the bag after weighing it, I can just put those shoulder straps over my shoulders obviously, and so the cameras aren't in the bag. And this brings me to why I have so many pouches. I'll normally wear a big jacket with big pockets, so I have a lot of heavy stuff in these pouches. So 
What I can quickly do is take both of the cameras out, take a few of these pouches out, so I've got batteries and I've got more lenses in these two, and then I've got my drone in this one. I take those two out, I take the two cameras out, and then I know my bag is around about seven kilos. Now with some of the airlines, the limits are quite high. So I think with BA, it's around about 22, 23 kilos for your hand luggage, which is great. There are other airlines like Etihad and Emirates, and their limits are really low, around about seven kilos. And I think it's the same with budget airlines as well. Some of them weigh your bags, some of them don't, but it's always good to be prepared to have your hand luggage weighed. One other thing that I might have to take out is my laptop. So I do have it in the pouch. Because I'm traveling, I've got everything in my bag. I want to get everything from A to B. I'm not talking about traveling every day with this, but I'm talking about when you get on a flight to go to a destination. Once you're at that destination, I tend to leave stuff at the hotel and then kind of pack it more as a day bag. But this gets as much kit as possible in this bag and it probably comes to around about 15 to 20 kilos, depending on what I've got in there. The one other thing that I have, and I haven't actually put them in that well, are hard drives. So I never pack my hard drives, obviously in the checked luggage, they always come with me and also your batteries. So if you've got batteries for a drone, batteries for maybe a motion slider or anything like that, and maybe some bigger drones, you always have your batteries with you. Now, if we're traveling just for pleasure, I would take my gimbal with me and have it down in this middle slot. So that would pack away nicely. But if I was on a shoot or if I was flying to a job where I had to use flashes, I could very quickly with this setup, remove that, and put my flashes down in this center column instead. Get it. I often take too much with me when hiking, but what you'll find is often you don't use a lot of it. I've also knackered myself out on several different occasions because my bag was way too heavy. So you really do need to keep the weight of your bag down, and as you get older, this will become more of an issue. So the key with hiking is to pack light. If you shoot with an APS-C camera as well as a full frame camera, just pack the APS-C. Or if you have a bridge camera, just pack that. That is, unless you're going on a long hike with a specific shot or a specific task in mind, then you can take more specialized kit. In saying that, if you just have one camera, you'll obviously pack that. What I'm getting at is that you don't really want to pack everything just in case. I've got some of my favorite shots from Glencoe in the middle of the day and I was shooting handheld and some of the shots were taken with the RX100 Mark II. It was pouring down with rain and there was a storm cloud over us and it was a really nice moody scene. So these small cameras can really shoot some fantastic quality images when the light is right. If it's just random things you'll find on your walk, just take the lightest camera you have with the most versatile lens. The way I normally set it up for a long hike throughout the day is to basically take out most of the dividers. I'll have these two L-shaped dividers in here. I'll have my APS-C camera, which is now the A6600. And then I have a couple of lenses as spare. So I've got a few different options. I'll often just take the APS-C camera with a kit lens or even just one prime lens to challenge myself just as a way of cutting my gear down. Actually having one camera and one lens is sometimes really refreshing and you don't get crippled by choice. You have to use that to your advantage and you have to use that to the best of your ability. One other thing I always take with me when hiking as well is the Peak Design rucksack clamp. This basically clamps on to the rucksack strap and it means that I'll have my camera clipped on here. I make sure I have room for it in my bag just in case it starts raining or the weather gets really bad, but it's really nice to have your camera clipped on this mount so you can take it off take a shot and click it back into place and then your hands free again. It really comes in handy and this clip is well worth getting. So obviously with all of the dividers taken out, you have a lot more space. So you can see I've got my jacket in here and then it's just this whole space here. So I'll have a jacket in there. I'll have loads of layers in there as well. And sometimes what I'll do is put dividers up this central part 
and have my snacks in there. So even a sandwich and a few snacks. And as I've already said, that's the fantastic thing with these removable dividers. You can set it up with as many pouches or as little pouches as you want. One way with setting it up as I have, this means having this L shape here that I can take the camera out of this side pocket here. So that works really well. I can have it over my shoulder, swivel the bag around and open up that side pouch and take the camera out. Say if it's raining and I'm not using that peak design clip. So you have a few different options in storing your camera and using your camera. Now, do you set your camera bag up differently to the ways that I've just shown you? If you do, let me know in the comments below. Now, if you want to see that video of me doing the initial gimbal bag setup, where I sounded really sleepy and a little bit stoned, even though I wasn't, click on this next video here. And if you want to learn more about flash photography, click on this video down here. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for weekly tutorials in photography. I'll see you next time.